James is saying, hi, Ed. How can I start a business if I don't have a product yet? Now, of course, the answer I'm going to uh, give to that is you really need to do the challenge, right? Because if you're asking that question, which, by the way, James, is the wrong question, okay? Because it's not about the product. And I'll address the specific product issue um, because that's the question. So I don't have a lot of background detail or information. The first question you need to ask yourself when you're considering going into a business for yourself is, of course, what market am I going to serve? That's the key issue. It's not about product. You don't think of a product and then go into a market. That's the old century way of doing things because it's you just can't invest the time and energy it needs. You can't be hands off a market anymore because here's the problem. If you're hands off the market, you may get some initial success, but then you will be slammed by people who are actually passionate, interested, engaged, and are indeed influencers in that market. So you've got to choose and pick your market first. And, and as I mentioned with challenge.co, which is live and available for you right now, it's a, we take you through all the steps Steps for figuring this out, market what their pains, gains, and jobs to be done, etc., etc., etc. Now, the fifth business focus is, is, of course, to create valuable. Listen to that, valuable products and services that serve your market that they're willing to pay for, and that's where we need to look. So, let me give you some, uh, you know, some tips in terms of doing that, and it comes back to the vital, vital question of pains, gains, and jobs to be done. You know, what are the pains in your market? What, where do they want to go? What are the things that they are always complaining about? What are the things that they want to learn how to do? These are the sorts of questions, and again, you can download all of these as part of the challenge. You just need to sign up and download and get cracking. Um, what are those pains, gains, and jobs to be done? When I'm working with private clients, that is the key key thing to understand, for me to understand business, because everything becomes easier from that point, because all of a sudden your opt-in pages become easy, because you address a pain, you deliver in return for the email, I'm going to point you in the right direction, you may not solve their pain, but you can give them, hey, here's three things that may work for you, all those sorts of things, so understanding that, now, so the product or service that you create is all about doing that, but doing that in the next level. So you're creating a product or a service that the market needs. And you do that based on your understanding. So rather than just coming up for a product idea in isolation and thinking, oh gee, mousetraps, they're a great idea. First of all, we've got to find those markets. And the reason we do this with the products is that we can so much easier identify markets first and listen to that market. You know, never, there's never been an easier, cheaper time to start up a business. It's fantastic. But you need to, you, the, the, the uh, quid pro quo, if you will, of this is you need to respect and understand and serve that market first. Okay, that's just the, because otherwise you do what, by the way, probably 90% of people do already and they think exactly like you asked the question James oh, I need to think up a product you know oh, I want to start a cafe without doing that so they think product first that's the standard way of starting a business and it's flawed it's risky it's super risky you may come up with a product and you may hit on something which becomes a viral success and it's all right but I can't teach like that I can't teach for the one percent of the time that that happens it's much smarter from a 99% perspective to really get to know your market, understand it, serve it, build a list in your market. So when you do have a product or service of value, you can tell people about it. And that theme happens over and over and over again. Had a really uh, interesting meeting in the last couple of weeks and uh, something I'm really, really passionate about at the moment is crowdfunding. I think it's going to, it's the future. I think it's the future of the information marketing business. So you may not have heard of crowdfunding. You may have heard of uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo. This is places where people can get products uh, funded before they actually build them. And then once they've got the money, they can then build and deliver the products. And it's incredibly popular and it's getting more and more popular. It's really matured a lot um, over the last couple of years in particular. It's never been a popular place for information marketing pro um, 
products for two historical reasons. One is Kickstarter, for whatever reason, didn't like information product courses. And I'm not talking about courses about making money. I'm talking about piano stool restoration or a course on how to learn a guitar or any of those. It just, they, they're much better now. But in the early days, they just knocked back anybody who wanted to actually sell a course. It just didn't fit into their view of what they would crowdfund. Indiegogo, the second largest of the crowdfunders, they their problem was that they use PayPal for their um, facilitation. So they collect all the money on your behalf, and then once the the you know this the the product or service is successfully crowdfunded, then they give you the money. Now the problem was PayPal was freezing the accounts, so you couldn't so. All these people had given you money, they'd successfully funded your project, and you were snookered because you couldn't get the cash out of PayPal. Um, now, there are much better solutions now, and I believe that uh, you know Indiegogo have worked on that with PayPal, so that, is, again, is better. But there are even better services uh, for information marketers. And look, I'll go into this go into this another um, time but what I want to talk why, why I want to make the point is here's how I would think about product creation going forward and it's certainly something that I'm looking at and very passionate about if you follow our focus steps our six business focus steps so you've gone and understood your market you know what their pains gains and jobs are to be done you serve the market by you know, social media and by helping people out and by being a participant and building up your influence in that market. You understand where the traffic's coming from. Where can we get traffic for that market? And you are, and this is key, you build a list, okay? So all of a sudden, rather than creating a product or service for that market with all the risk that that entails, because even if you've done all of those four steps, you can still have a dud product. Why not create a crowdfund campaign? And I'm seeing really smart marketers and magcasters, screwcasters, and, and people with information products start to be doing this. As I say, we're a bit behind the eight ball because of those historical reasons that I just mentioned. So here's the cool part of this, right? Think about it. So what does actually a crowdfunding campaign um, entail? Now, it's not nothing like there's work involved but in some ways it takes me back to the old days of copywriting and testing a product with direct marketing back in the 50s 60s and 70s when you know Gary Halbert was the uh, you know greatest of all time when it came to direct marketing and they would do tests and they'd do product tests so here's what you do so now a, a good Kickstarter page is a lot like a great sales letter and a great mini launch document. It's literally got a sales letter in it. It's got a great video explaining the product. There's lots of information about features and you've got a whole bunch of rewards depending on how much a person commits. You give a whole lot of rewards. It's really, really fascinating. But here's the cool thing. What have you actually done? Well, like, what are the costs? You've created a video of some kind You've done the, you've written the sales copy, and if you understand your pains, gains, and jobs to be done, then the sales copy is much easier than if you don't. So it's making a whole bunch of assumptions. But here's the cool thing: for a video and a sales page, which may take you, uh, you know, a week or two to put together, you can then put up this crowdfunding campaign. And the huge mistake people make is they put up the crowdfunding campaign and think, ah, beauty. You know, if you build it, they will come. This is not Field of Dreams. There is no Kevin Costner anywhere in the district. This is all about you then marketing the heck out of that crowdfunding campaign. What's the number one way by so far it's not funny? Ask Kickstarter, ask Possible, ask Indiegogo. It is email lists, email campaigns, letting your market know about this Kickstarter. And if you're clever, you actually let the market know. Involvement breeds commitment. So all of a sudden, right, instead of taking James's question and saying, how can I start a business if I don't have a product yet? Well, you build a market first. You ask that market question first. And I wouldn't build the product. I would create the crowdfunding campaign because I'm spending a week instead of who knows, weeks, months, a year, I don't know. Depends on the product or the service you're building. And one of two things is going to happen. One, you're going to get the crowdfunding campaign up. In other words, because here's a key mechanic of the crowdfunding campaign for those of you who are not uh, too familiar with it. 
basically you have a period of time, typically it's 30 days, at the end of the 30 day, and you have a crowdfunding target, which means you'll proceed with the project. So here's the thing, so let's say it's $10,000. So if you make above $10,000, if you get $10,000 in commitments, when somebody makes a commitment, they're they are not charged. Their credit, there's no money taken from their credit cards. It's only once the the uh, Kickstarter or the Indiegogo, the crowdfunding campaign, is actually funded, then the card's charged, and then the money is then passed to the creator. Really sweet, because if it fails to get funded, everybody gets their money back. No, no, no harm, no foul. So wouldn't it be good if you can't get somebody to fund and create a great deal for them in a Kickstarter, how are you going to make a successful product? This is incredible when you think about it. This is all the best, you know, there used to be, um, well, frankly, an illegal way to market in the United States. It was called dry testing, where you would, uh, and, and this was in the old days of uh, mail, when direct mail literally meant mail, where what would happen is people would send a thousand letters about a product they'd get responses for those letters and they would tell from the response and the orders that they received whether people could get, you know, would, would buy this particular product. And hopefully if they got a successful campaign, then they would off they would go. Now, if, why was that made illegal? Because what would happen is people would collect the money and then never deliver the product. But now, thanks to the Jobs Act and crowdfunding and all that, this is a totally legit way of doing it. And it's a way that protects both parties. So you can do crowdfunding to create your product. And to me, that is the number one way going forward. If you've built a tribe, if you've built, you know, our thousand true fans or our first thing that we want to build is our thousand true emails. You know, if we've got a list of a thousand people, we can start to test things. We can start to see whether they're interested in this product. So instead of creating the product, you build the sales letter around the product, you build the video around the product, and then your market will tell you whether you've hit the nail on the head or not. And if you don't, no skin off anybody's nose, you go and you try again. You retool it. There are many, many examples of Kickstarters that initially failed to fund, then the creators retooled them, and then they became great products again. So, James, long way of answering that question, but I think um, I wanted to, because um, I'm so pumped about crowdfunding and what it means, um, as I, I think it's going to revolutionize the info marketing industry, the industry of teaching, you know, serving markets, niche markets. I think it's going to revolutionize things. As I say, it's gone off to a slow start because of those things I mentioned, but I think it's going to be pretty exciting. So that is how I would do product uh, creation now.